Hey everyone and welcome to Let's Learn Premiere Pro. Today I'm going to talk about 360 VR footage. I've been experimenting with the Ricoh Theta. It's one of many 360 VR cameras and so I just want to kind of walk through how you would go about importing and converting the footage and then bringing it into Premiere and then of course preparing it for YouTube. So the first thing you want to do is once you've captured your footage on the Ricoh Theta, you want to plug it into your Mac through USB. It doesn't mount as a disc, so what you should do is just search your computer for image capture, open that up, and you'll see that all the video clips that are on my Ricoh Theta have been populated in this window, and I can just simply highlight them and, you know, drag and drop them to the desktop, or in this case, I can import them to the movie folder or whatever folder you want. So I'm just going to go ahead and highlight all these videos and click import, and then once all those clips are import you can see the green check mark so I know I've got them I can go ahead and navigate to the folder to see the video clips with this Rico theta the clips come in as two spheres so you can see it's the two lenses that kind of give you that 360 field of view so what you have to do is actually stitch those two lenses together and thankfully Rico provides software to do that download and install the Rico theta app it's just a blank window and you can drag your clips that you've downloaded from your camera right onto that window. So here you can see I dragged it, it's waiting to decompress. Start the video conversion, it usually takes a while because it's doing a lot of processing, so if you have longer clips you might have to wait a while, but since we have the magic of video I'm going to speed it up. And then once it's done you can actually view the clip and I can actually rotate the video and you can see that it does work. Now I have my converted clip, they add ER on the end of it, I guess that's just what they want to do, and this is what it looks like. Looks a bit weird because it's been flattened out, but that's what we need when we want to edit in Premiere. And I've already got my test project loaded up with a few clips that I've been cutting up. I'm going to just bring in my most recent clip. And the easiest way to get going with this is to right click it and uh, create a new sequence to match your settings. The dimensions are correct, the frame rate is correct, everything's correct. I can just go ahead and do whatever I want to this video. So in most cases you want to kind of cut the you know beginning and end off because you're kind of awkwardly holding it these two Toronto clips what I've done is I stitched them all together put some cross fades in for the audio and you know chopped off the beginning and the end so that it kind of flowed a little bit better and that's exactly what I could do here as well I might want to start the video clip when I'm actually not there and I can cut off that end so you don't see me come back out to turn it off again this is just an example of what you could do you could do a lot crazier editing but for now this is more just how to work at a basic level with this type of footage so I'm just gonna go ahead and try and do an experiment with some text here so I'm just going to pick an interesting font here, and this is at the time when the Raptors were in the playoffs, this was <sighs> top of mind, but of course they didn't make it all the way. They did give it a good shot, but maybe next year. I'll throw that on top of my clip here. Now, you have to kind of think of this flat plane as something that gets wrapped in a circle. So for me, I'm thinking, you know what, I want to have we the North be centered over that part of the image. So I'm going to have to split it up and, you know, put half my word there on one end and half on the other. But I know that when I see this on YouTube, it's going to be stitched together and you're going to be able to view that as one continuous word. Again, this is just playing around. You're going to see what you can and can't do just by experimenting with this kind of stuff. Now, when I want to export this, usually you know, just try and match the YouTube settings. I have a preset, but I felt like doing it manually this time. Usually doesn't take too long to export, but I'm just going to speed this up. And then, of course, once it's done, we have to take this export that I've made out of Premiere into this little tool called Spatial Media Metadata Injector. And you can download this. It's free. It's actually um, recommended by YouTube to inject that metadata. So I'm following the instructions that they lay out online as well, which basically means import your clip, check spherical, don't touch anything else because we're not super advanced with this and you just click save as and it'll save it as a new clip with the injected suffix on the end of it and you can take that and upload that to YouTube. Once I upload it here and process it I should be able to see the video with 360 controls. Now it does take a bit longer to process the 360 experience than it does to just process the video file and YouTube does note this on its white papers so you kind of have to be patient but sometimes it can take up to an hour so I can usually just refresh this a bunch of times and then here you go you can see I have the controls to navigate this clip in 360 space in about an hour's time you'll have the full quality experience the downside with this camera 
I'll say right off the bat is that even at its highest quality, you're not going to get that sharp of an image. But again, the Ricoh Theta is great for people that are just beginners or people that want to just experiment with this stuff and just get going quickly. That's why I tried it first and that's why I chose to use it for this tutorial because it is so easy to get going. You can see I, I shot some footage um, on the weekend and I just, you know, held it with a selfie stick. You can see me there and I just kind of give you the, the tour of, of Toronto. But you can get so much crazier with this. You can see it does have a 1080p option. You can have HD, but again, it's not super, super clear. So this is an intro to 360 video using the Ricoh Theta. I think it's an interesting camera, and if you want to get going for not very much money, you can definitely start doing 360 video in no time. If you have any questions, just let me know in the comments, and I'll see you soon.